Good morning, Padawans. It's the Comics Kid 2099, and I'm here to talk to you about another Star Wars thing, specifically Star Wars Clone Wars Volume 1. This is not to be confused with the 2008 CGI animated movie of the same name or the animated television series that spun out of that movie. This is the 2003 animated series done by Jindy Tartakovsky. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I first want to say that I am not an expanded universe guy. Basically, I consider the original movies to be the official Star Wars canon. I've read a little bit of Star Wars comic books. I don't play the video games other than a few animated things. I don't watch these movies. I don't really consider myself an expanded universe guy at all. I just wanted to say that so that you'll know how big of a deal it is that I'm reviewing this. Right off the bat, I have a complaint. Not only about this movie, but the live-action Attack of the Clones movie as well. One of my huge complaints about the prequels was that we really never got any reason why the Clone Wars were being fought. All you have is the Sith slash the Separatists, they have all these robots. And then the Jedi slash the Republic, they have clones. Clones are fighting robots. But there's no ideological conflict going on. Now I guess I could use context clues and figure out maybe the Separatists want to separate from the Republic. But in none of the movies do we ever get a hint that that's what's going on. And that's a huge problem. In fact, the only depth we ever get concerning our Clone Wars is robots versus clones. There is no further reason why these wars are being fought. And you have to wonder, has it occurred to anyone in this universe that if you have an unlimited amount of robots being created on all these robot factory worlds, and you have an unlimited amount of clones being created on the Geonosis system, is there any way that this war is ever going to end? Do they think that they're going to actually win at some point by using these unlimited resources to fight their war? It makes no sense at all. And I know it shouldn't be Tartakovsky's job to explain why the Clone Wars are being fought. That really should have been George Lucas's job when he was creating the Attack of the Clones movie. But, if Jindy Tartakovsky is going to say, yeah, I'll do this animated Clone Wars movie, then either A, he needs to take it upon himself to create some kind of ideological reason why these battles are happening, or B, the executives who are giving him this job just need to give him a little bit of room so that he can create some kind of reason why these battles are happening. Basically, we need something to care about in this animated movie. Really, we needed something to care about in the Clone Wars media in its entirety. I want to try to give Tartakovsky the benefit of the doubt here, but I just don't think I can do that. Both of these movies are done by the same guy, Tartakovsky. This is the Samurai Jack movie that started off that animated series of the same name. And what both of those animated movies have in common is that they are all style, no substance. Really, there's very little story in either of them. I may do a review on the Samurai Jack movie some other time, but for right now, all you really need to know is that Tartakovsky seems to excel at creating these really great stylized battle scenes and just this really fluid kind of stylized animation, but he doesn't really seem to know how to create a story, or if he does, he chooses not to. I should really back up some of my points, so to start off with, let's talk about the plot of this animated Clone Wars movie. The plot is as follows. Anakin and Obi-Wan are going around the galaxy fighting robots and monsters. That's it. There's no overarching theme, there is no character arc for either of them, there really isn't a whole lot of connectivity between these separate battles. It's just a whole bunch of separate battles fought by different warriors across the galaxy. And I guess we're just supposed to go home at the end of the day and say, that's good enough. They're all part of the same war, so they're all in the same movie. No. If we're going to have video games, a television series, and several movies set in the Clone Wars, I think what we really need to have is, in this movie, we have a specific battle that is pertinent to the Clone Wars. So, maybe Obi-Wan and Anakin go to Hoth, and they have to try and reclaim this planet for the Republic because of X, Y, and Z. In other words, don't have separate battles that have nothing to do with each other all happening in this movie. 
What we need is a movie where all of these scenes have something to do to each other, and ideally, each scene leads into the next scene. So that means we need to take out the scene where Kit Fisto is fighting evil crab people underwater, or Mace Windu is fighting this big giant hammer robot on a dust world, or Yoda goes to rescue these two Jedi on the world where they manufacture lightsabers. None of these scenes have anything to do with the rest of the scenes. If I went in there and edited out the scene with Kit Fisto or Mace Windu or Yoda, you would not be able to tell the difference. I'm not saying that would absolutely fix the movies, because all the scenes with Anakin and all the scenes with Obi-Wan, they really don't relate to each other either. They're just as unconnected as these scenes with Kit Fisto and Mace Windu, etc. Mace Windu just kind of comes in, he doesn't say one single word, he fights a robot, and then he leaves. What does this have to do with the movie? He's just a walk-on cameo. It needs to be removed. It doesn't serve the story in any way, and it doesn't serve the characters in any way either. Now I will say that Count Dooku, knowing the location of the world where they manufacture lightsabers, that makes sense, because he is a former Jedi himself. Trying to cut off their source of lightsabers, that also makes sense. I'm not saying that a Jedi can only win with a lightsaber, but if you watch the prequels, it seems like they do most of their fighting and speaking and just anything with lightsabers. So it makes a whole lot of sense that he would say, yeah, we need to get rid of that planet over there so that they don't have lightsabers anymore. The problem is, that's not the plot of this movie. That's just a scene in this movie that has nothing to do with that. It needs to be taken out, or they need to do something with it in another story. I wouldn't mind reading a story where Count Dooku is trying to take away the source of their lightsabers so that they can't win, but that needs to be a story. That doesn't need to be a useless part of a series of small stories. Speaking of ideological conflict, these scenes, I don't really get them. Kit Fisto is fighting an army of evil crab people. Who are these evil crab people? And why are they invading Admiral Akbar's home world? We really don't get any sense of why any of this is happening. And even if I've seen Attack of the Clones, I don't really know how these evil crab people relate to the Separatists or the Republic or the clones or the robots. They're just bad guys who Kit Fisto goes and fights underwater. And it doesn't relate to anything else that's happening in the Clone Wars. Or if it does, it relates to something that I haven't seen, read, or played, and therefore it's a failure as far as I'm concerned because when I'm watching this animated movie, I shouldn't have to rely on knowledge from outside of this movie in order to understand what's happening in this movie. I'm relying quite a bit on the idea of conflict driving a story because, well, that's what a story is. It's conflict. So, before I move away from this and talk about some of the other things I didn't like, I want to tell you really quickly a really easy way that the Clone Wars as a whole could have worked. In the world of Star Wars, you have clones. Not just clones of one dude, but clones all across the galaxy. And clones are probably second-hand citizens, they don't really have the same rights as people who are not clones. And then, as tensions tend to build, the clones all rebel, and they start these wars and these guerrilla battles against the non-clones. The clones are rising against the people who have treated them like crap for their whole lives. And then the Jedi have to intervene. They have to stop this war from happening. Probably you would have people like Anakin who says, you know, the clones, they have a point. They really do need to be treated better. And Obi-Wan says, yeah, but they're acting about it all the wrong way. Then you have character conflict between these two protagonists. I'll talk about them in a moment. And then you also have a conflict that makes sense. We understand why the clones are acting this way. We understand why people in the Republic are getting antsy about the clones acting this way. And then you could have the Sith who are in the background manipulating everything, and they could be saying, oh, this is perfect. This is our chance to try and take the Republic while they're distracted by the clone menace. It doesn't really have to be complex at all. This point, it's simple, it's direct, and it gets the job done. And you can make many different stories based on this very simple plot synopsis. It could start in Attack of the Clones, then you could have this animated movie by Tartakovsky, then you could have the CGI animated movie that came in 2008, and then you could have the animated series that came after that. All of it could just be based on this very simple idea of clones rising against the non-clones and having a battle. Instead, what we have is robots versus clones and there's no real reason why they're fighting each other other than these are bad guys these are not 
and they're punching each other because that's what kids want to see in a story, I guess. I've already talked about how the plot of this movie is really terrible, so let's talk about the other thing that should be important in a movie. Characters. These characters are really flat and boring. We know absolutely nothing about Anakin Skywalker or Obi-Wan Kenobi if you're only watching this movie. Now I know basically everyone has seen the Star Wars live action films, so if they're going to be watching this movie, chances are they've already seen those. However, just because that's probably true, the people who are making this movie do not need to rely on knowledge that I might have from another movie. This movie needs to be a standalone film. This movie needs to have all the character work in it that I will need in order to understand why these guys are doing what they're doing. So what can we take about Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker from this film? Anakin is younger than Kenobi. Kenobi thinks that Anakin disobeys him a little too much, so Kenobi complains about it. Kenobi likes to make jokes sometimes, and that's about it. I guess you could say they're both soldiers, although with my knowledge that I have of the larger Star Wars universe, I would say the Jedi aren't really soldiers, but if I'm only taking what I know from this film, I would have to say, yeah, they kind of are soldiers fighting in a war for some reason that we don't know. I guess you could say that Obi-Wan not really having a personality is very similar to The Phantom Menace or even A New Hope, but the problem is you still need to at least try to give him something. If this story doesn't have a good plot at all and has characters who are really boring and do things for reasons that I cannot figure out, then what's the point of me watching this film? I'm afraid I can't even answer that. There is no point to watching this film. At least the prequels tried to give us stuff like this. I mean, the plots in those movies were usually incoherent, but they were at least trying to give us something new and interesting. This is just boring, and I can't really find anything here that's exciting at all. The characters here, they're also boring. At least in the prequels, Anakin, I hated him, but he had personality. I could go on for days explaining why he was a terrible character, but here he's just kind of a guy who fights people silently and we don't know anything about him at all. That's not good storytelling. You might say, oh well this movie it's set in between the two live action movies so it has a hard job. It can't really create tension since we already know that Anakin has to be alive by the time we get to Revenge of the Sith so that he can then become Darth Vader. You'd be right about that. In fact, any prequel has that problem when you're dealing with a prequel. Trying to create a prequel and add tension to the prequel would be about the same as tying up someone's hands, throwing them in acid that is full of cannibal sharks, and then telling them you need to swim away. In any prequel, you already know how it's going to end because in theory you've already seen the movie that the prequel is set before. Filmmakers who are making prequels need to work at least twice as hard to make the tension still there and make the characters interesting even though we already know what's going to happen by the end of the story because we've seen the movie that it is prequelizing. But I'm afraid I can't give Tartakovsky a free pass here. You see, there are plenty of other storytellers who work in the expanded universe, and I'm not just talking about all the time that's set before The Phantom Menace and all the time that's set after Return of the Jedi. There are lots and lots of stories set in between The Phantom Menace and Return of the Jedi. Those stories, quite often, they deal with characters who we've already seen. Now sometimes they deal with brand new characters and in those cases the storytellers have a little bit more room to wiggle because I don't know if Cad Bane is going to live or die because he wasn't in the movies. Somebody who's doing a story about Han Solo set before the original trilogy They've got the very same problem that Tartakovsky has in that we already know Han Solo is going to end up on Tatooine and meet Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker. But if they can make it interesting, kudos to them, that means that they're at least a very good storyteller. I can't say the same thing about Tartakovsky. I'm not saying it's impossible because other people have made prequels interesting. Just because Tartakovsky fails doesn't mean that we should say, well, it's because he had an impossible task. No. Other people have done this, and they've done it well. It's just that, well, he's the one that I've watched his movie, and it was a terrible movie, so here I am telling you that it's terrible and saying that we can't give him a free pass just because he had a hard task in front of him. 
I've already talked about plot and characters, so there's one other aspect of this film that I want to tackle real quick before I head out, and that would be the antagonist of the film. Now, we already have Emperor Palpatine, who at this point isn't an emperor, and we have Count Dooku. They're both the Sith who were in Attack of the Clones. In this movie, I guess we're introduced to a character for the first time, although maybe she showed up elsewhere before this, and I just don't know. Her name is Asajj Ventress. Who is this girl, and why should I care? When we first see her, she tells us that Count Dooku is looking for somebody to work for him. In fact, Count Dooku wants somebody to go and murder Anakin Skywalker. Why does Count Dooku want someone to murder Anakin Skywalker? I don't know. The Emperor, his big plan was to corrupt Anakin Skywalker and turn him into his tool so that he could take the Empire with ease. Does Palpatine know that Count Dooku is telling Asajj Ventress to go and kill Anakin Skywalker? Maybe Count Dooku wants one of them to kill the other one. He doesn't really mind which one kills who. If Anakin kills Asajj, then yay! If Asajj kills Anakin, then yay! The problem with that is, if he just wants to eliminate all the people who can use the Force so that there's fewer people who can then come around and kill him, I guess that's what he's trying to do, then why didn't he just kill Asajj Ventress whenever she came to him for the job? Is Asajj Ventress a former Jedi? She has lightsabers when we first see her, so I have to assume that she's either a Jedi or a Sith. Count Dooku even says, no, no, you're not a Sith. Not to mention, Yoda in Phantom Menace said there are only ever two Sith at a time. Now, in the course of this movie, we see Palpatine, we see Count Dooku, we see Asajj Ventress, and very, very briefly, we see a man named General Grievous. All four of these people use lightsabers, and they seem to be operating under the dark side of the Force. Now, I've seen many people say that General Grievous doesn't actually count as one of the Sith. Okay, so that's three. Does that mean that Yoda was just didn't know what he was talking about when he said there are only ever two Sith at a time? Is Asajj Ventress a Sith? What is going on here? Again, this movie doesn't bother at all to try and explain what's going on. It doesn't tell us why there's a contradiction here with the Phantom Menace, and it doesn't really tell us why I should care about this girl at all. It doesn't tell me where she came from, and it doesn't tell me at all why she's being sent to kill Anakin Skywalker. These are things that should be explained to us. I shouldn't be asking you these questions or having to look at this novelization of the movie to find the answers. I shouldn't have to do that. A good movie, I should be able to take away all of these answers just by watching it. I'm afraid that's not the case here. At the end of the day, I have to say that this movie is really terrible. And that saddens me because I heard from a couple of different people who typically I trust that it was a really good and interesting film. But it's not. The characters are boring, the plot is boring, and the antagonists, they make decisions that make no kind of sense at all. I'm going to have to say, if you come across this movie, do not watch it, do not buy it, go on to something else. I'm sure there are hundreds of Star Wars stories you can find that are more interesting than this in some way. And just remember... If you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, his wife will never see him again. I'll see you next time.